Well, we're still at the Intermountain Train Show, as we promised last time. This is actually footage from last year's Intermountain Train Show. And we mentioned that we would follow up with John Pratt, who had his, really his like modules at both years' train All shows as it happens. He'd invited us to come to his house and see what he's doing there. Yeah, he set up a couple of these modules. He can't set the whole thing up right there in his house. So gave us a chance to see, uh, see some of this stuff. This, this, again, is what it looks like at the train show when he's able to set up, I guess, most of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I think this is, this is most of the railroad when he sets it up here at the train show. He's from Mantar, Utah, home of the Ratfink. Yeah, and that's uh, home of you, too. <laughs> just, just about. I'm from north of there. Yeah, just, just barely, but right there. Mm -hmm. This is the Rat Fink reunion. Right. <laughs> we, we love the Rat Fink reunion. Well, we met at the Rat Fink exactly, reunion. Exactly, we did. And uh, long story there. If you follow the channel, you know that story. But we almost always go to the Rat Fink reunion. And last year, we went over to John Pratt's house to see his modules. The modules look like they're about six feet long and sort of connect together. I think for the most part, he just enjoys building the models, not so much the railroad. But most of this stuff is all scratch built. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, and he's, a, uh, he's just an amazing builder. You saw some of these at the November. Yeah, this one's just gorgeous. That is quite the build there. I love that. This PVC, and then the yeah. top and the ends are just PVC. Have to happen to fit. The smaller size happened to fit that tube perfectly. Nice. And this is cardstock with, with wood ribs on the side. Other than that, it's cardstock. Nice. And when you paint it up, you know, it holds it really well. No, you can do a lot. Karen does a lot with that. And these are some of my early Your structures, ones. they're so much wood and cardstock yeah. and printed on the computer. Yeah. Yeah. These are styrene here, and there's like an 1895 boxcar, and there's an excellent picture right out of that George Abdul book I showed you over there. And that's where they got the inspiration for that. I knew it was 40 foot, so I used general dimensions, so I guessed a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, simple K brake brakes on it. I only had one judge. You got a merit award. Yeah. So we can see from this one car that's only partially built uh, exactly what his technique is using a styrene sheet. This is exactly like uh, the way Al used to build. I'll say it is. Our good friend Al Batum. And, and uh, John was a, a great follower of Al's work, and the two of them would get together and compare notes at the train shows. My father started me in HO when I was about five years old, so that would have been in the late 50s. Yeah. And uh, he um, gave me a, a comeback book called Practical Guide to Model Railroading. There was no end yet. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about this book is it really favored craftsmanship and scratch building. And it did not give top building to any particular scale because of popularity. There were four scales at the time that they talk about anyway. There was O, S, um, H, O, H -O. and T, T. And they gave equal billing to all of them. And I thought that was wonderful. Now they showed models in all the scales and so forth. And S was emphasized in a scale way. Got it. Not a tin, the, the even O scale was, was not emphasized in a tin plate way. Yeah. So anyway, they, they showed uh, a quickie kit and also a craftsman kit in, in this book. And the craftsman kit basically was a pile of lumber, some white metal cast details, and some pre-printed sides. And so when I did that, I pre-printed my sides on my computer. That way I didn't have to go looking for details. Yeah. Pre-printed the sides and then glued them onto some wood and all... There's a little bit of cardstock, but that's just from the side here. Everything else is wood, it's maple. Because maple is dense, you know, and it, yeah. it, it's not porous. And so, and, and then the details of brass, I, I soldered up all the ladders. I even flattened the ends and pounded them flat and, and drilled through into the angles. Beautiful. And so they were made like on the prototype. And I even, I even carved the brake wheel out of a 20,000 drill bit out mm -hmm. of brass. Well, I, I turned it, and then I did the, the release that way. And I, a few years ago, I got a VNO round-top boxcar in mm -hmm. brass, 
and I loved it so much, and I gotta build one, so there you go. There it is. Unfortunately, I never sealed the rivets, and a few of them have come off, so before I paint it, I gotta you know, replace some Redo rivets. the rivets. I have no end of grief with that. And then I gotta, you know, you know, clear spray it, and then I'll, you know, it's not final shaped or fit, but I, you know, I put it in a pattern in the oven at 250 degrees, and it bent it just right. Perfect. And then I'm gonna trim it and, you know, put a celestiary on it and stuff. This is a recent one. Oh. This is not accurate for UP, but it's a fun car. Sure. And so I decided I get, I used to have a whole set of those and I sold them and sort of regretted it. Yeah. And I want to make a whole set of accurate UP. Anyway, I've got uh, some, some resin kits that are going to be turn of the century truss rod coaches, uh, a combine and baggage and so forth is going to go with that. Altogether, there's going to be eight cars. I'm hoping that engine can pull eight cars. I think it can. Oh, I'm sure it can, yeah. I love the high stepper. That's, that's just beautiful. Me. Yeah, so that's... Big, it's not quite tall. as old as what Al was modeling. Because, you know, you did a couple of Al Batum videos. Sure. And I took screenshots full size of every single model of his. <laughs> and, um, this is a, a kit uh, made out of brass. Okay. Like a precision scale or something? Well, it was called S scale local and supply. Okay. But it got sold and then the old guy died and then it's been sold again and who knows where all the patterns are now. And this is the one that Al Batum came up to me and at the at the show in two thousand seven and said, Is that a Yosemite Valley caboose? And I go, Yeah. <laughs> Smart guy. No, I, I lettered it for UP because I wanted an old UP caboose. That is a kit bash SM3. It started life as a Revell um, awesome. brand uh, HO stock car. Oh, sweet. But I, you know. The widening. Well, I widened it simply by putting those boards on the outside. So I widened it just a tad. Okay. It's perfect. These were Kinsman kits where the hoppers were cast white metal and then wood. Hmm. And I used the plans that came with this to scratch build those other three. Those are all scratch built styrene. But I this the plans are this, so they're all three, all five of them are matched. That's just a resin craftsman kit, but it was such a nice car I brought it out. I uh, I built one of those once entirely out of wood. I've still got it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Now his locomotives are, well, a rather mixed bag. Some of these are brass engines, just ready to run brass engines. A lot of them were built from kits. Here are all the empty boxes. Oh, wow. Of course, whenever you collect any kind of trains, especially brass engines, you, you want to save the boxes. Oh, yes. But uh, a lot of the locomotives that he has are ready to run brass some of them are brass kits and some of them are scratch built wow. uh, but generally speaking i think uh they're all brass but just going through the collection here in the build room wow i mean check out the union pacific challenger that's a really high-end blue rim i think i told you last the blue rim is some of the best brass ever that is gorgeous Paint at Santa Fe because that's exactly what it is. It's the, one of those Santa Fe 484s that they have restored. Okay. Okay. And that's what it's going to be Santa Fe when it's done. And that's not the 3985, but it's one of her sisters. Yep. Really similar. And I love wagon tops too. They're yeah. Covered wagons, I guess. What's not to love? I don't know. I, just, I remember as a kid, you know. Wow. Except for those panel side uh, hoppers, they're really poor. So this is one of the kits that he's currently working on, and that's how they are delivered. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, this is not a shake-the-box kind of kit. This is a holy cow, uh, borderline scratch building kind of kit. Really, really amazing kits. He's actually modifying this kit into Union Pacific number 618. Oh, my goodness. Now, I haven't formed the boiler yet. This is the drivers. This is the frame that came with the stuff I got. But, you know, I am making my own frame. That's both side frames for the main frame, solder together. And then when I get it all done, then I'll, you know, unsolder them. You know, finish the top to bottom. Sure. Overall. And I'm going to move the motor over and just do some modification work. But I'm making it into all-wheel pickup, which I didn't mm -hmm. have before. 
Oh, there, I have several of these for my Alabama Memorial train. Oh, 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 these resin kits. Yeah. yeah. Behind, yeah I was going to try to get one started for you, but I, yeah. like I say, I uh, follow all of your videos. But, Oh my goodness. <laughs> there, there's a nose under the door over yeah. there. Yeah, it really fits. <laughs> this standard gauge stuff is really impressive, but uh, interestingly, some of the railroad is three foot gauge. Oh, wow, look at that. SN3. So part of the railroad is done in dual gauge, and then some of it is just straight up narrow gauge, and then some of the equipment here is three foot gauge. Oh, neat. Turn and, just adopt it. and so I have a little bit of brass in this entry, not too much. This is brass. Right, the uh, Pacific oh, Fruit Express here, that's you beautiful. I've always been a fan of the Pacific Fruit Express. Oh, yeah, I've got oh, about 18 or 19 PFE cars. This is just some of them. I had a so anyway, John's kind of a fixture here at the NMRA's uh, annual fall show, and uh, he'll probably be back again next year. Exactly. But it's just really fun to get caught up with him and his amazing modular railroad with this just amazing equipment. Well, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, you want to be a subscriber to the channel and maybe even uh, a member. Anyway, the way to subscribe is with the upcoming blue button. Right there. There it is. <laughs> the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday as we're talking about some of these scales and gauges. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.